despite what their moms told them. They just aren't talented enough for radio. Unfortunately, anyone can have a show these days. Sean. Well, I'm pretty hard to figure out sometimes. I can't even figure myself out sometimes, so don't you try to. Joe. You're an idiot. And really, a disloyal person. This, this is the Cuse Militia. Those two unapologetically biased, orange-blooded homers, Sean and Joe. It's the most bullshit thing I've seen in 30 years. Welcome, orange men and ladies. Happy Saturday. This is the Cuse Militia with Sean and Joe. For the Believe Entertainment Network, at Cuse Militia on the socials, go there, join the Militia live on X Spaces most of the time for the fan feedback segment of every post-game show. This would be a post-game show, but there is no fan feedback segment for this show, which is probably, I mean, in eight years, it, it could, since we started it, it could be the first time. And I just didn't feel like reading it, to be quite honest with you, and talking about it here. So we're going to make this short and sweet two days after a 41-13 loss with a 17-point uh, first quarter for Pitt with two pick sixes and three points off of another pick. Um, I figured we would not cower away from talking about an ugly, ugly loss uh, offensively. Um, We can talk about the good, which for me is, uh, I thought the defense played stellar. They were actually really freaking good. So 266, Mm -hmm. or excuse me, 166 yards of total offense for Pitt. That is pretty damn good. And without without the way this game started, setting the pace for the rest of the game, um, you know, this is totally different. But that's not what happened. So we're going to deal in reality here. And we can give you the ifs and buts of it, but that's just what they are, ifs and buts. But the defense should get all of the, all of the credit for what they did. And I thought they played um, an extremely good game. I thought that I don't remember who picked that. Well, first of all, the first play of the game, Elijah Clark missed a pick. I, that, that, I mean, that kind of <clears throat> told the tale, bro. I mean, right, right there. Yeah. <laughs> that kind of told the tale. Um, just outplayed, outcoached, and I hate to say that. And Fran Brown's a, a, a human; he's not perfect. And uh, you know, I think that. Um, with that said, the other the other positive I took away from this is a very selfish one, and it's that Kyle McCord continues his three hundred plus yard streak. And <laughs> um, I was I would have thought that. There's no way when I turned this off at the half, which I did, I never went back to it, and I, I slept like a baby, and I feel good about it because I, I had accepted this loss uh, after the first quarter, to, at the very latest. In my head, I accepted this loss after the, the 10 nothing um, back-to-back picks. And then when we go three drives with three picks with two pick sixes, I pretty much fully accepted this loss, and so I slept like a baby. I slept fine. And when I woke up, I didn't expect any different, but I did check, and the one thing that jumped out to me was that Kyle McCord continues a streak, and the Syracuse defense was amazing, and I can just look at the stats, and I can tell you by looking at these stats that this team didn't give up. And at the end of the day, that's a very important thing. They didn't get they didn't hang their heads and we're going to hear from coach. I don't want to get too much into it, but I want to give Joe a chance to uh, give his thoughts on the game because he hates himself enough to put himself through the agony of watching <laughs> of watching this entire game like I tweeted. I don't hate myself enough to continue watching this game. And since the O-line is asleep, I'm going to do the same. Uh <laughs> just, just a very poor performance from the offensive line. One thing I will say, I'll pat ourselves on the back for it, Joe, is in the pre. Now we had the score totally wrong, which we're usually so accurate about. But you know, you you win some and you lose one. Let's call it right. <laughs> so it, the preview was pretty good. I mean, I, I don't usually bring up the preview, but the preview was pretty good. Now we had the outcome of the game completely wrong, but I think all the points were there. Like like an aggressive defense, you know, we thought, and by the way, holding Desmond Reed to 43 yards, and by the way, I was wrong. I was wrong on the yards. It wasn't 166. So it's just over 200, though. Um, 
but holding Desmond Reed to 47 yards, um, he's a slippery dude. And, and mm. uh, I thought that was, that was excellent because he was the one I was extremely worried about. So anyways, I, I'll, I will, it was 217, which is still awesome. Um, I will, I'll give the floor to you, Joe, give your thoughts and then we'll hear what coach has to say. And then we'll, we'll wrap it up and we're going to move on to Virginia Tech. I mean, not today. Yeah. Okay. I was going to say. No, 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 no. We're not doing a preview. Um, No, 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 no. (laughs) That would have been a surprise. Yeah. No, you know, I, I put my, I guess I'm a masochist at some point. Um, you know, I just put myself through the pain. Uh, I always watch it because I like to see, you know, how people bounce back from adversity. And I didn't really obviously expect them to, uh, I didn't expect them to come back and win, obviously at halftime. So tried to call you and I knew you were probably done and didn't want to talk about it. So, um, I texted but you, yeah, but yes, I, I texted you. Though. It's, it's hard to, it's hard to really look at the stats and really tell the story. Cause they even spoke about it during the game when they were looking at the yards and talking about the defense and everything. It's, it's, I mean, we had 41 minutes of time of possession to so their, you know, 19 and, you know, that's probably why, um, the yards look so good and the first downs and all that other stuff. We had so many more plays. Yeah, I think we had something like 90 something offensive plays yeah. to their 40, 40 something. So, um, yeah, we just, obviously you could tell early on that the offensive line, unless we didn't make some changes early. Um, but also it's, this isn't normally how games go, you know, as, as, as bad as the offensive line played and, and stuff like that. And, you know, penalties killed us. I, we can complain about the refs. Obviously I think there was a little home cook in there. Eight, eight penalties for 70 yards to their three for 28. And a lot of them didn't come late till late when the game was already in hand. And, um, and don't forget about the Marlowe wax, uh, rough in the passer when there was an interception. And I guess we all know why it was called, but I mean, Arguably a a, a, a a shit call. Yeah. So, you know, I saw a couple holds in there that they missed. Oh, and, yeah, absolutely. Then really, if I mean, the game comes down to those three plays where you score so fast. The defense gets 21 points, three pick sixes, then. Uh, and 24 gonna, points off of turnovers. Yeah, it is going to be difficult to win to win that game. So in the realistically, like in the first half as bad as we played. Like the ball has to bounce a certain way. You're not going to get all those those tips and all those things like that. They're going to happen. And guys laying on the ground and the ball just falls in his hands. Like there's a lot of there was a lot of that that happened and it just kind of sucked the life out of us early. And, and it's just almost like we couldn't do anything on offense. Uh, didn't get a, a running game going. Uh, didn't seem to. I mean, we tried to do a couple screens stuff like that, but the short stuff wasn't working. Gadsden left the game. It's just, I don't know. It's just, it looked weird. It's, it's one of those things where I'm not going to overreact. Uh, Cause I know there was a couple players banged up on the offensive line and stuff like that. And Pittsburgh's D looks legit. I mean, they're still undefeated. So maybe they're better than we thought that they were, but uh, well, I don't, I don't see this isn't going to be a continuation like I don't see any other game this year going this way maybe Miami but even that even so uh you need to have the ball bounce the right way and go the right way to get the pick sixes and stuff like that so this is to me it's more of a a, a one-off than anything else but again you got to tip your hat to Pittsburgh that Pat Narduzzi defense and you look at some of those stats man I mean Talk about domination. There's four sacks, nine tackles for losses, five interceptions, three for touchdowns, eight pass deflections. Uh, yeah, the tip the tip balls were um, – that was like getting a colonoscopy. It was terrible. <laughs> yeah. And, and our defense put ourselves in position to get in, some interceptions, and we did get some interceptions that were called back, and we had some tip passes ourselves that popped up, but – you know, they just didn't happen to be luckily popped up right there in the hands of an awaited, you know, other defensive back in stride to take it to the house. It's it's unfortunate and it just it sucks. You know, it's happened to me before as far as in real life and as far as playing football games. Sometimes you're playing a game against a, a team that, you know, you know, you match up 
okay against. I mean, obviously their offensive line and defensive line didn't match up, but it's not like they're that much better of a team than us, I don't think. But some days things just don't go your way and they beat the crap out of you and you just walk away like, like we're not that much. Like, you know what I mean? Like we're not far away from them. But, dude, that defensive line it, made our offensive line look bad. And, oh, that's what we talked about when this game was going to be. I mean, all games are one in the trenches, but we knew what this could be. And I just didn't think it was going to be that bad of a matchup. And I think it comes down to being out coached. And I think it was the matchup because – Syracuse, they did. They knew what Syracuse was going to do, and they, they, and of course, we got to play into our strengths. So that short passing game is what we need to do, and we just didn't have time. There's just nothing could develop, and because of that, he's staring down receivers. Right. So yeah, it, it, and that's covered in tight coverage. You just yep. you got that's the first. I'm this year that they played, they went against it. They they schemed us up good. Uh, a lot of teams that we played this year, you know, they try to get pressure with four, maybe blitz one linebacker or something like that. They don't show so many exotic looks, and they kind of just it's a bend but don't break. You know, they don't want uh, McCord to beat you deep, so they just keep everything in front of you. So it's been easy for against those defenses for McCord to pick them apart, and you have time for late developing plays and you know a Trevor Pena to slant all the way across the field uh, in, in against Pittsburgh. They didn't allow us to do that. Uh, yes. By the way, it was 44 plays to 93. So um, 50, uh, 49 plus 49 for Syracuse. Uh, okay. Let's, uh, let's take a listen to what and see what coach had to say following the loss. Coach, when you pulled Kyle aside towards the end of the first half, what did you say to him? Stay focused, keep pushing, I'm with you. We're doing this all the way to the end. So I said things happen like that. The ball ain't landing our way. It should land our way the second half. We'll see how it goes. But um, he's our quarterback. He's our leader. Um, and that's why we stuck with him, and we're going to continue to stick with him. I mean, he just had one bad game. So just it's part of football. You know, it happens. Uh, I think you'll be able to see the kind of fighter he is as, as he keeps going from here on out. Uh, it was just a lot. You know, I feel I let him down. So... Just think this was a real big game. This was, to me, this was a game that we were supposed to win, that we should have won, and um, they came and they outplayed us, and that didn't happen that way. So we just got to keep getting better. You know, we have some things we got to do that are better. But you wouldn't have been able to tell me that uh, all the way up until, I guess, that last drive, they had like 100 and almost 200 yards complete offense, if that, and um, only scored twice, I think. So you wouldn't have told me that they would have had you know, two touchdowns and on offensive side of the football and under 200 yards and still have 40-some points. So just how it goes sometimes, you know? But they just dominated on defense today. They did a good job. But I wasn't worrying about, like, stopping them. That wasn't our thing, you know? But um, Narduzzi, who's known for defense, he bust our butt. You know, he bust my butt straight. So, you know, they got to – I got to do better than that. I got to do better than that for our university because uh, Syracuse University doesn't deserve that. Uh, our faculty, staff, alum, student, like none of this, our students, none of them deserve to have to look at that that way. So I have to do a much better job of having our football team be able to be on a big stage on Thursday night in front of the country and play that way. So that's completely myself, and I just truly apologize to uh, everybody that has anything to do with Syracuse. <laughs> Okay, when things don't go your way, how do you handle that? Do you still go do the things that are required for a man to do? So um, that's the first stage that we got after getting our um, getting beat like this tonight. It's for us to be able to go sit in the classroom tomorrow and man up and face our peers and face the staff and all the things like that. So we just got to c- continue to grow, you know. We got to continue to grow. Uh, Coach, with both of the losses this year coming off of bye weeks, do you think that that relates at all or, or not really in your opinion? I mean... Nah, but everybody going to say that. Actually, I'm confident in our fan base, you know, that they'll all be behind and see us push. Um, I didn't see – you guys didn't see a team that quit, right? When you watched the game, there was no quit in us. There was nothing like that. The football just didn't go our way. So, uh, until you see us quit, then that's when you can say, ah, this is just bad. But, I mean, they jumped out. What, they had 28 in the first quarter? Yeah. So, they had 28 in the first quarter. They end up with – 41 total. So, you know what I'm saying? That's just who would ever think that, you know, my opinion, one of the better quarterbacks in the country would have 
that kind of first quarter like that where the ball just didn't bounce our way. So it's just part of the game. And um, I'm thankful about our team. I'm thankful about everything that's going on right now in Syracuse. And I'm even thankful that you asked me that question so everyone understands and knows that uh, we're going to keep our chin up. Appreciate you guys. Yeah, so I guess the the what to take out of this game is the response, okay? And it always comes down to that after a loss like this, is how is this team going to respond? They're hosting Virginia Tech, pretty decent Virginia, De- Virginia Tech team um, next week. So you get a little bit of it. You know, you have a short bye, kind of, right? But you get a longer, you get almost like a, like a quasi bye again. You know what I'm saying? It's almost... Yeah, it's almost kind of split. So you get a few extra days there, right? Too, but I mean, it's better than losing like this on a Saturday in prime time and having to come back the next Saturday and um, you know bounce back. You know, uh, yeah. He did talk in the beginning. The beginning of the the beginning of the press conference was actually cut off, but he did talk. Um, in the beginning about the injuries and, you know, we had, uh, Willis with, with a sprain go out and with like very little time left on the clock, like four or five minutes on the clock. Mm -hmm. Um, you can say what you want about that. And I will in a second. And you got, we all saw if we watched the first half, I know a lot of people shut it off. So we all saw the first half for the most part. And uh, you, you got, uh, Gadsden coming back in street clothes, obvious, uh, concussion issue there. So we uh, hope, obviously, that he comes back. But another receiver stepping up in Emmanuel Ross, which is um, good to see, right? So mm-hmm. uh, the, the the pool there for the receiving core, it runs deep. And I got a lot of confidence in them. And I got a lot of confidence in McCord still. McCord did not play a good game. Did not play a good game. But it's tough when you're kind of running for your life. I mean, how many times have we had to see him like scramble outside the pocket to make a play happen? I mean, it's not, yeah. not very often, right? I mean, it's been decent. And the, 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 the offensive line has kind of been an issue here and there inconsistently, but obviously just totally exposed against Pitt. My hope is that uh, people, don't, don't, people don't load the box and rush seven like Pitt did numerous times. Yeah, because uh, you're not going to block it. I mean, you got to get someone else in there, a Valari in there, uh, something back there to help uh, to help with that. And you know, if it's just going to be that easy to be exposed, then that's going to be a problem. But my, I'm a little off my my thought. My thought is, is about the bounce back, and I uh, just threw the injuries in there. But I will say this: there was a question asked by um, I think her name is Ashley. I can't remember her last name she reports she does um the orange zone or something like that you guys okay. know you guys know who she is um she asked the question about the bye week which is just i threw that in there because i know we're all thinking it and coach laughed about it so <laughs> at this point there's no denying the bye week curse okay until it's broke or well, i'm not going to we're not even going to humor it um yeah. at least i'm not but um leaving um, the leaving the guys in there real quick and then i'll let you talk joe i'm sorry I thought it was good to and look, and I said, you know, I would more worried about McCord getting hurt because how bad the O line was. But it, whether it was to let him get 300 yards, which I don't think a coach is going to do, by the way, I have speculation about that. I don't believe that. I think it was just to have him go through it. And you hear a coach in the montage talk a lot about. Well, in the montage, we put some of it in there, but it was more in the press conference about these guys being men and keeping your chin up and being able to overcome, uh, you know, losses like this in, in, in kind of just getting handed, you know? Um, yeah. And it was good, I think, to keep those guys in there. And, and you can face criticism because Willis seems to have a, some kind of sprain. But at the end of the day, um, what makes men? I mean, pressure. Pressure. And overcoming it, and it's not about what happens to you, but how you deal with it. So we'll see next week. And that's my big takeaway. Like, let's see what happens next week. Don't let Pitt beat you twice. The old cliche, right? Um, yep. Just, just put it behind you. Be men. Go to class, like Coach said. Deal with your peers. Keep your head up. It was a bad game, but it doesn't last forever. Get over it. The fans are gonna it's gonna have a harder time to get over it than the players would be my guess. And uh, I don't even want to hear nothing about Stanford anymore. 
Stanford. Like, come on, <laughs> this is way worse than Stanford, you know, in my opinion. I know Pitt's ranked. You know, Syracuse playing three ranked teams in a year in the first seven seven games. That's unheard of. So this team is who they are, who we think they are. They just got out coached and outplayed, and the game, the the scheme for Narduzzi was too much. Period. And if I was yep. if I was to put it on a head of a pin, the last two sentences of what I just rambled on about is is everything you, that I need to say, really. But anyway, yeah, Mama said there'll be days like this. Yeah. I thought she said it's like life is like a box of chocolates, though, too. Yeah. You never know what you're going to get. <laughs> yeah. You got your asses kicked. That's what you yeah. got. So, look, uh, again, I got to stay positive as far as that goes. I think that he kept McCord and those guys in there uh, for ex- the exact reasons. It's like, no, we're going to go through this adversity together. You know, yeah. I do truly think that he that he thought that they could win. There's no doubt in my mind that with his confidence and everything like that, they're looking at the score 31 nothing, saying, hey, that's just four touchdowns and four two-point conversions. So let's go out there. And, you know, that's just his mentality. He's going <clears> to <throat> try to keep it as optimistic and as positive as possible and just go through and fight. So, um, yeah, they, they didn't give up. Um, I, I, like I said, I watched the whole game. Uh, but also, too, I kind of believe in, you know, he takes accountability for when – his players or a certain part of his team doesn't play up to, Stand you know, up. expectations. Right. And then, you know, he says, well, we're going to fix it. And, and most of the time he says that they're going to fix it. And he, he usually, you know, looks better. Right. I don't know if it's a hundred percent fixed, but well, looks yeah. better. Right. It's like a work in, in you know, working in improvement, you know, work in progress. Um, Real quick. Before, yeah, 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 yeah. Before, like, we still do we 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 still um have a kicking game issue? How many times do we go for it on fourth down? I know why we did it late. I know that, like you mentioned, like I know that. But how, what were we for, on fourth downs? We we did pretty good, right? All yeah, all in all. Which we because oh, t- yeah. we talked about this in the in the in the preview, the going on for it on fourth down thing. Yeah. So. Well, we were six of twenty on third down, and we were six of seven for the game in fourth down. I mean, that's freaking stellar. And how many on one drive? Like three or four? Three or four in that opening drive. It was like an eight or nine minute, ten minute drive open coming out of the first half. Uh, so again, they go down and score. They don't get the two point conversion, and it's like there's some positive stuff there. I don't think Pitts- Pittsburgh really wasn't like going at them the way that they were in the first half. They were kind of like allowing some underneath type stuff. And really, to me, it showed the first time what that game would have looked like if they would have just kind of sat back and just bend but don't break and keep everything in front of you. Uh, And McCord started looking like what he normally does because they weren't blitzed. You know, they weren't getting the pressure like that. Uh, And then we went down and scored. And then after that, it started up with the pressure again. And we tried to do some different things to – you know, get them out of the pocket, stack one side and have them roll out to the right and screen passes and shorter passes like that. But um, that was too much time. You know, you, you go down and score, but you take nine minutes out of the quarter. And now you're talking about there's two, three minutes left and then only one quarter. And now you're, you're still down four scores. So um, it was positive, but it also, you know, kind of ruined the chances of a comeback because they weren't allowing big plays. And... You know, it's just at the end of the day, you we, just got to hope that um, we kind of knew they weren't going to a lot of big plays. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 But um, but he gave his dude, he gave his his receivers some chances one on one. Sometimes there were some bad throws, but also, you know, the receivers, they didn't, they didn't some drop. They didn't beat, yeah, they didn't. There were some drops and they didn't beat, you know, they didn't they didn't beat their guys like we have in previous in games. And, you know, even going back to. <clears throat> the first half where you get a pain, you drop and you get that Gadsden. drop through the hands, the gats and would, that would have been a touchdown that yep. would have been made it 17, seven probably would have changed a little bit of momentum. Yeah, uh, absolutely. It would have, but you know, that's just, those are just signs, all that stuff and all the, just the, the pick sixes. They're just signs that it just wasn't going to be your day. So, uh, you just got to pick up the pieces. You know, they showed something that I don't think a lot of defenses even have the personnel to, to pull off, but, uh, Nonetheless, they're going to be able to look at this tape and figure that out so that 
hopefully um, when that does happen again or another defense tries to mimic what they did to us, then we're going to be better prepared for it. And I, I have all the trust in, in Fran Brown and, and the coaching staff. Uh, plus, like I said, I think that that game was just a little fluky. You know, you go back to, you know, we say all the time, the Stanford game, you know, eight, nine times out of 10, we win that game. There's a um, lot of flukiness to that game. And and, still, and and to me, it's just like, you know, that doesn't seven, eight times a, a f- that we play. A fluke though is an anomaly, bro. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, dude, they just weren't, they weren't, they just, coach, coach, coach all but said it, dude. He, he put it on his shoulders and it should be on his shoulders. Like I said, he's not perfect. I, I don't, I don't think this makes him a bad coach or anything, but this is on, this one's on him. No, yeah, but you're talking about an offensive line that's you know, you put together. It's got you know new people as far as personnel this year, and, and this is the first time that they've had to deal with some of those. This first time of seeing those looks and everything that that you know front seven was doing for Pittsburgh. So I mean, uh, the first time I hear something about something bacon, and we're I'm done here. I, I may never even come back to this microphone. Yeah, but I, I think, think we've seen improvement to some yeah. degree, right? I yeah, mean, I mean, it's in some spots where we were, yeah. But we got uh, Marlo think, Wax back. We got, yeah, we got Marlo Wax back. We got, I mean, Trevor Pena came back, or at least, I mean, I don't think he, he missed a game, but he was. No, he didn't miss a game, but he's questionable because of a, a concussion protocol as well. Right. right. Yeah. Uh, still haven't seen, you know, Justice Ross Simmons is out there, and he looked a little lost at times. You know, Emmanuel Ross. I just, you know, that, that was something popped into my head, and I thought, you know, maybe. With some of these guys coming back, Trevor Payne, you're not practicing all week, and then all of a sudden he's playing, and, and, and same thing with Marlo Wax, and all of a sudden you're plugging him in there. Like, you know, maybe some of these changes in these new guys, I don't know. I mean, did they, did they, did they practice all week? Were they all, you know, well, on the right page? It's stuff like that where, you know, Pittsburgh, they're locked in. They're undefeated. They knew they had to win that game. That defense looks locked in as ever. Um, and, you know, I, I come away from that game like, wow, like, like, I feel bad for the next team that has to play that defense, right? Um, and, and Pitt, like I said, I just, to me, they just, they're not a pretender at this point. And I'm not saying that they're a contender for, like, the playoffs, but they're going to have games to prove it. And, um, you know, they kind of, that defense sold me the other day uh, that they can stay in games with, with better teams and that maybe... It, uh, you know, just because of the teams they beat earlier, it just doesn't mean that they're not deservingly ranked. Oh, I think they deserve to be ranked because they beat us the way they did. Because I, because well, I, I feel like we're a good team. Yeah, you know. But I think too many Syracuse fans is going to get PTSD because it's right around this time of year, right? Right around the time oh, of October. Yeah. Well, we have already talked November. about it. Yeah. Yeah. So going into that's why this Virginia Tech game. It's going to be the biggest tell of the season. Can they recover from this? And that's why I talked about it earlier. Can they recover from this? Are we just going to start strong again and then just fold under under just being pure confidence, right? Like yeah. you have to you have to coach mentioned a bunch of times, you know, we're going to we're going to keep working, we're going to get better. We're going to keep working, we're going to get better. Mindset, mindset basically, right? And you understand we have to evolve. Yeah, and and um you know, I mean, Virginia Tech's no slouch. They're going to come into the Dome. We need to win that game. That is a crucial, Maybe. crucial game for Syracuse. Yeah. This is a it's... crucial game for both of these teams, too, uh, Pitt and Syracuse. Um, on the on the emotional level with the 80th, 80th uh, game between the two teams, um, the rivalry, uh, all the emotions that come with that, and um, fighting for a ranked position, being Syracuse um, knows that if they win that game, I'm sure it's not in their head, but it's in our head. Um, fighting for a ranked position for Syracuse and in, in becoming relevant prime time during the week is, you know, you had to, you had to, what was it, Vikings and somebody else? Like, no one's watching that game. You know, I mean, come on. This is a good college game for a Thursday for me. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure a lot of ACC fans were tuned in. People were watching that game by about 8 30. <laughs> yeah, or basically. <laughs> yeah. I mean, by the time that damn game started, Pittsburgh already had three pick sixes. So, yeah, well, that's very true, Joe. Thanks for reminding us. Sorry. Um, okay. Well, look, that. Look, what you got? One more thing? 
I was just going to say, it's just like you, I just wanted to piggyback on next week because we've been on the road for so long. We haven't played in the dome for so long. And, and then, you know, we play Virginia Tech at home and then, you know, we go back on the road to Boston College and then out another West Coast game to California those next two weeks. Um, we can't let this game, like you said, beat us twice. Go into a home game for the first time in I think a month or close to that and then you lay an egg there. I mean, you're setting the table for your next couple games because California is a winnable game. Boston College is a winnable game. And then obviously UConn at home coming back for the last two games. So, you know, this game pretty much sets the table for the last four games in November leading up to the last game at home against Miami. Um, Obviously we know we're not going to be playing for a conference championship, but I mean, we're still in position to end up. I mean, we still could end up, you know, nine, 10 wins if we wanted to in ranked. Um, but then there's also a position where we might only end up winning two more games and we don't even get to the point where, uh, to the point that we thought we were in, in the beginning of the season, um, because out in California is not going to be easy. Virginia Tech's not going to be easy. And Miami's not going to be easy. And obviously well, don't bust Boston college's arrival. And I'm not going to count that out at home either. Or uh, I'm sorry, on the road. Don't, so, don't let it come down to, uh, we got to we got to beat UConn to, be to exactly took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> yeah, let's not do that. Yeah. Okay, it's all I freaking ask. Like you said, the rest of the game, like Pitt, could be the that could be the toughest defense we play. I don't, I'm not real sure about Miami's defense. More worried about their offense. I'm sure they're good. No, they give up a lot of points. So yeah, Miami's offense is good, but their defense gives up a lot of points. So. Okay, well, Pitt's defense may be the best one we play, unless people can, unless other teams can replicate that. Then I'm, 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 I'm pretty confident in in that. So, um, and our obviously our strong suit is our offense. So we gotta, we gotta be able to figure it out just in case people are gonna try to load the box and rush seven. I mean. You know, that's. I don't think they rushed less than four. Though. I mean, the whole first half of what from what I saw. So, and they were successful yeah. with four too, by the way. <laughs> so, yeah. so I mean, you know, something's got to something's got to give there. We got to fix that. Um, yep. Okay. All right. Look, I'm sorry to drag y'all through it, but we had to come here. We had to man up. We had to go back in, into our peers, into class, and and deal with this like like men, right? So, anyways. Brand wants it that way. Brand demanded it, so we did it. Uh, Appreciate all of you guys. We'll see you Tuesday for Joe. I'm Sean. We're out. Peace.